Welcome to Lit Crit as Fuck, the audio experience in which I say shit about stuff and you listen to junk. Previously on AMC's Breaking Bad. Father Zucima on his deathbed, but also talking to everybody like fully animated, kind of. It's weird. I'm gonna see a little Rakitin be a douchebag finally. Hey, remember Grushinka? Guys, where's Dimitri? Title card. The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Part 7. Stinky Things. So Zosima dies and his corpse is smelly. Father Farapont and some other monks say it's because he wasn't a good Christian. Alyosha then has an existential crisis because of the smelly corpse. Rakitin comes across him and thinks it's super hilarious that Alyosha is all upset and sad and that he's having like a fall from grace. Grushinka had offered Rakitin money to bring Alyosha to her so she can seduce him, which would ruin his life entirely. And Rakitin would find that so funny and wants front row seats to it. So he brings a broken Alyosha to Grushinka's and she sits on on his lap and flirts with him while he's basically comatose. But then Barkeaton lets slip that Zosima has died and she feels bad and she's like oh, I wouldn't have been on his lap like this and acting like this if I'd known what was going on in his life and so sad and she actually cares. And then she tells a story about a woman who gave a person an onion one time but then went to hell. As a child, Grushinka had heard this story and apparently it stuck with her. It goes something like this. A woman had died and she's being judged for her life actions and choices and turns out she was pretty terrible. Her guardian angel, because everyone's got one apparently, goes and is like, hey I can figure something out here. She doesn't need to go to hell. And she's in hell and whoever the guardian angel's talking to is like, if you can find that she did something good, then then, you know, we'll maybe then. And the guardian angel's like, okay, let me figure it out. The guardian angel goes to the lady and he's like, um, hey, did you, uh, did you ever do anything good ever in your whole life? And the lady's like, one time I gave an onion to a starving person who I didn't know. And the guardian angel's like, that'll do. That's perfect. You can, you you might be a good Christian then. And so then the guardian angel tells whoever's in charge of heaven and they are like, okay, well here, take that onion because they make the onion happen suddenly. And you're going to bring it down to hell. And if you can lift her out of hell with the onion, then then she can come to heaven and hang out here. But if the onion breaks, then she can't. She has to go stay there. And so the guardian angel brings the onion down and he's like, grab onto the onion and I'm gonna get you out of this horrible place. And she's like, awesome. And she grabs onto the onion and he's kind of pulling her up. And then other people in, that are in hell are like, wait, you, I'm gonna, I wanna get out. They all kind of jump on and grab the onion too. And she's trying to push him off going, no, this is my onion. And of course the onion breaks because she was selfish. And so she doesn't go to happen. And Grushinka says, you know, I'm a bad person, but once I gave somebody an onion, she was saying like, I've done a, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm not a good person, but I'm not a hundred percent bad. And that's the way that she explains it. And Alyosha decides that he loves her because he loves everybody and he's Jesus. Which then kind of begs the question, well, why didn't Jesus love the lady with the onion thing? I don't know. Parables are weird. Alyosha snaps out of it, starts to get his Jesus on again. He and Grushinka become BFFs, which pisses Rakitin off. So then finally, Alyosha then goes home to the monastery where he is is listening to Father Paisi read the story of the wedding where Jesus turned water into wine and he sort of has a vision slash maybe a dream where he's at that wedding and other people or dead people are there and also Father Zosima's there and Father Zosima's like hey man it's okay it's all gonna be good everyone look yay heaven the end so do I want to do analysis of, of, of these chapters no no not really not at all I I really don't I'm tired um I'm getting really sick of this book finally didn't think it was gonna happen, but it finally happened. Turns out turning things that you like into work makes them not fun anymore. It's January of 2021. We just watched a bunch of rednecks try to enact a coup, breaking into the Capitol building and, uh, you know, threatening to hang the vice president. God, I'm not making this up. This is real. And I'm trying to talk about this book and I, I'm, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm just defeated. I'm not entirely sure I care about anything anymore. So what happens in this chapter is simply that we get to see Alyosha finally have a crisis of faith. He's the perfect little, you know, dude who's always had this strong belief in whatever he believes in. And, um, something goes wrong finally. Like, he's had a kind of 
easy life in the sense that he hasn't really struggled with anything that's happened. It seems to me this is the first time that Alyosha ever really has a moment where he's struggling with something. <laughs> like legitimately like uh, having an actual real life moment. And his reaction to that real life moment is he's doubting his path. He's doubting the path of becoming a monk. He decides that he's just gonna like break the fast and, and you know maybe eat some sausage and drink some brandy with uh, Grushinga and Rakitin. Who knows what's gonna happen? He's up for anything at this point a guy's body smelled after it died everything's in chaos oh my god really he's in mourning i am kind of guessing that dostoevsky was trying to give him some a little bit of layers maybe <laughs> he's not a multi-dimensional character alios is not a character that you're like oh i can completely identify with that guy nobody nobody identifies with him nobody literally nobody having the main character never question anything ever is really boring i'd argue with dostoevsky on this one if he tried if and again he'd lose because like I said before, he's dead. But if he tried to tell me that if definitively Alios is the main character of this or even the hero of this, I'd be like, meh, you sure though? And he'd be like, well, yeah, I wrote it. And I'd be like, yeah, but you're dead, so I don't care. Alyosha is more of a spectator in this book. Alyosha has, for the most part, non-judgmental kind of outlook on everything. And so these characters, when seen through his eyes, you're getting the closest to an objective omniscient narrator type. So of course, he is going to have interactions with people that are supposed to be colored by his character, but his character is very bland and accepting. He's more of a device than he is a character to show all of your characters in a, in a positive light, even when they're horrible people. <laughs> or to show how horrible they are in like relation to him. Yvonne is, um, in my humble opinion if there's a protagonist it's Yvonne and I don't think there really is it's not Dimitri for fucking shit's sake it's not maybe it's Dimitri I don't know Dimitri and Yvonne are both significantly more interesting than Alyosha but these chapters are focused on Alyosha kind of having a crisis of faith and then coming right back from it pretty quickly more interestingly we get to see that Grushinga isn't just a cruel mean jerky face like she seemed like she was when she was at Katya's and being mean. Grushinka is a complicated woman. And we get a little bit of an insight into that here. We get to see her become a little bit more of a character. <laughs> and of course, we also get to see that Dostoevsky does like to have people who are just downright awful. He loves those kinds of characters. They exist in every single thing he writes because I, because they exist in the real world. And so Rakitin is just inexplicably a dick. There's really no explanation or reason for his dickishness. Rakitin and um, Smirnikov are the only characters characters that don't like Alyosha. They have very little in common in a lot of ways as far as characters go. I don't think Smirnikov is cruel. I don't actually. Smirnikov isn't cruel. He's a sociopath. A psychopath? I don't know. Rakitin is just a dickhead. He has all the like negative attributes of like a human. You know, he's jealous and he's judgmental. He's the anti-Alyosha. Rakitin is the anti-Alyosha. So of course we get an introduction into Rakitin. I did my whole kind of introduction to who found the fire contest. His entire purpose is like to be the guy who when Zosima dies decides to start speaking out about how Zosima was actually a corrupt soul and a bad Christian and to just talk really bad about him right after he dies. So we kind of set up this character just to have him be terrible and then that, that whole thing of hearing these people talk this way about Zosima and in the midst of his grief is what's going to push Alyosha over the edge and kind of make him lose his shit for like two seconds. And so Falafarapon's gone. Like this is the last you're going to see of him. He served his purpose. Bye bye. Yeah, that's really it for characters in this. Like, it really is. Like, Paisi gonna Paisi. You get Father Fairpont, you get uh, Lyosha, you get some Grushinga, you get some Rakitin, and then, uh, and then you kind of, and then you kind of have the ghost of Zosima for a sec, hanging out with Jesus. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Like, this isn't super interesting. I realize these chapters aren't that interesting at all. And especially since they come, like, directly after... Uh, the Yvonne chapters and then the Zosima chapters. I just like yelled at the book for hours and now I'm talking about Rushinga and an onion. It's, it's 2021, guys. They're, that's all. That's it. Um, bye. Next on Twin Peaks. We're gonna find out what the hell Dimitri's been doing all this time. And boy, it's a lot of stuff. This entire part coming up is entitled Dimitri. He goes on a little bit of a crazy Dostoevsky adventure. So expect very few orcs at least one priest, a drunken peasant, and a very mean businessman. Someone's gonna die. I don't want to tell you who, I don't want to give away who, but this book is from the 1800s. Spoiler alert, Hamlet dies. 